Good evening. The time is 7.35. I apologize for running a little bit late. Uh, we will call the meeting to order. This is the public hearing and regular business of mayor and council for the city of Snellville, Georgia, Monday, March 26, 2018. Um, we've got our invocation tonight with senior pastor from the Snellville United Methodist Church, Dr. Jim Cantrell. Thank you, Dr. Cantrell. It's good to see you. Next, we'll have the pledge to the flag. The pledge will be led by Ernie Shivers, a World War II veteran who served in the Navy at Guadalcanal and Guam. If you'd like to come forward and lead the pledge, we are pleased to have you. <clears throat> Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir, and thank you for your service. Tonight, we have no ceremonial matters. We have the minutes. I'll take a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve the minutes of the March 12, 2018 meetings. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> <laughs> There's a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. That's five in favor, none opposed. We have no invited guests tonight. We've got a few committee or department reports, starting with the Board of Appeals, Ms. Ferris. Good evening. The Board of Appeals met on March 13th to hear BOA 1804 and BOA 1805. Both of these applications were for a variance by the Picron family, LLLP, relating to the requirements of the corridor overlay district, the architectural design standards, the sign ordinance, parking and landscaping. This was for the two office buildings at 2366 and 2376 Lenora Church Road. 2366 Lenora Church was awarded four variances and one denial. 2376 received six approvals and two denials. There were conditions placed on both properties. Any questions? Any questions of Ms. Ferris? Thank you very much. Next we have do we, uh, Ms. Johnson from the Arts Commission. Good evening, everyone. I sincerely apologize that I wasn't here last month. I don't remember why, if I was sick or what was going on, but, huh? Take that. Oh, right. Ah, my tooth, you're right. I'm still having trouble with that. Thank you, thank you, yes, yes. We're still working on that, but it's getting there. I, I know, now I know what you're talking about. Anyway, um, we are 
working on some things for, I forgot all about it, and here I don't even have them anymore, so it's like, ugh. Um, <laughs> um, May 10th, we are, we have scheduled what we're calling Art Smart. Um, the principals and the um, heads of the art departments will be receiving letters uh, this Friday, by this Friday. And what that's going to involve is we're going to ask the audio video, audio visual departments of all schools, the three schools in Snellville, to put together a three minute presentation on how arts affect their schools and how they're presented in their schools. Um, the winners of the winning school is going to receive $500 for their art department. And the winning team is going to be receiving an exclusive tour of Turner Broadcasting. And this is already, in, in already set in motion. Um, we're going to have, on the 10th, is, is going to be the finale when the uh, winners will be presented. And, well, actually, all the schools will be presented. Their videos will be presented. And um, the winners will be announced. And we hope that the council will support us on this and be involved. And we'll be contacting you to let you know how you can help us with that. Um, the dinner theater, obviously, is uh, not going to be taking place until the fall. We're talking about around the holidays. We think that's going to be a better time frame for us. And we'll be able to put together a great presentation. We have put the announcement on our Facebook, I mean, on our yeah, Facebook and our website. So people, are no, uh, people know about it, but I'm still getting emails and I'm trying to respond to let them know that it is going to happen, but it's not going to be till then. And then lastly, uh, in July, and I just got confirmation from Kelly that uh, this date is open, so I need to get with um, uh, Air Arian, Air Arian on to finalize the date. But on July 21st, it's a Sunday, July 21st, I believe, or 22nd, whatever that Sunday is. We're planning a spirit fest, which is going to be complete with um, food vendors and possibly some related vendors. This is, we want to involve all the interested churches in Snellville who want to showcase their choirs and praise teams. July 22nd is the time, as the day, and it'll probably be about 3 p.m. So we'll have more information coming on that as we move forward. But that's the three big things that we have going on right now. Any questions? Any questions of Ms. Johnson? No. Nope. Nope. Thank, Thank you, you for your work and love the haircut. Thank you. Next we'll have Ms. Kelly McAloon from the Snowball Tourism and Trade. Good evening, Mayor and Pro Tem and Council. Um, not too much to report. Uh, this past weekend, we had the uh, co-hosted the Spring Green and the Gwinnett Life Run. Everything uh, went well. And Snellville was kind of like with the run. You know, it was new for them, um, ha you know, with road closures. So we're not quite like Lawrenceville yet where, you know, people are accustomed to walking a couple blocks to get somewhere. But all in all, it, w it went well. And um, even with the road closures, it went pretty well. Of course, there was a little backup, but that's to be expected with any road closure. Um, the Spirit Magazine has been mailed out to the homes. Um, I hope everybody's received it. It should have been in homes Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And I just want to give a shout out to our whole editorial committee. Um, everybody did an awesome job. So I think this is uh, the magazine. We've gotten really great reviews on that. So um, happy about that. We're working on our summer edition. Um, the date of the general volunteer meeting, I put out an email for this Thursday. It's been rescheduled uh, for Tuesday, April 17th at 6 p.m. And on April 3rd is our next Commerce Club meeting uh, at noon in City Hall. Uh, please join us. It's a great way to stay connected and to know what's going on in Snellville. And that concludes my report. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any questions for Ms. Macklin? Okay. Thank you. Next, we have an update from the Snowball Youth Commission with Chris O'Donohue. Hello. Good evening. Um, so, as many so as many of you know, uh, last week we uh, the Snowball Youth Commission had their first first uh, youth summit. 
Uh, the name of it was called Impact. The purpose of it was for our students to communicate to other students in the community how they can uh, positively affect change in their communities. Uh, they did so through multiple sessions where they, uh, they led them themselves. And even on top of that, the entire program was mostly planned by the students themselves. So we're definitely excited and, and proud of them for being able to put it together and for the result. Um, we didn't quite get the turnout that we were hoping for, probably had a little, little to do with the weather as well, um, but it was still a success and, and we're happy about how it turned out and all the things that the, the students learned themselves. Um, in addition to that, we have also started the application process for next year's program. Uh, the deadline is actually this Thursday, I believe. Um, so if anyone here knows any students from Shiloh <laughs> or South Gwinnett or Brookwood High Schools who are interested in joining the program, we encourage you to encourage them to uh, apply. The application is available on the website, on the Snellville website, on the Snellville Youth Commission page. Um, also, the next time you will probably see them in public will be for the Snellville Days Festival. They will be volunteering for that event as well. Awesome. Thank you. Next, we'll have approval of the agenda. Is there a motion for the agenda as presented? Motion to approve tonight's agenda. The date is March 26, 2018. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve the agenda as presented. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. That is five in favor, none opposed. Now we'll go into our public hearing. We have one item tonight under our public hearing. We have the second reading for CUP 18-01, consideration and recommendation on application by Adeloy and Tina Little at uh, ATL Motors LLC for a conditional use permit for an automotive repair and emissions testing facility and request for variances from the Snellville Code of Ordinances for the 0.71 acre property zoned BG district and located at 1080 Cooper Road in Grayson. Mr. Thompson. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Thank you, public, for being here tonight. Um, we've got CUP 18-01, which is a conditional use permit and request for variances from the Snowville Code of Ordinances to operate a um, automotive services and repair facility as well as a vehicle emissions testing center. Um, the property was originally built uh, back in 1988 as a six bay self-service car wash comprised of nearly 2,600 square feet on a 0.71 acre site at 1080 Cooper, Cooper Road, which is adjacent to the intersection of Cooper Road and Highway 78, right behind the uh, new gas station that's just reopened there. Uh, on the corner. It's surrounded by um, commercial type uses with BG uh, in the close vicinity as well as one parcel that is still being and then the old uh, honky tonk I guess across the street there Rudy's uh, <laughs> that's still in the county. So basically uh, the ordinance requires that um, at when they require for the conditional use permit there's a couple of uh, conditions they have to follow. The one would be that is all their inventory or their, their worked on cars should be uh, parked and displayed outside on a paved surface only. And uh, all the service bays will be uh, up to code with state, federal, and local uh, safety and life safety codes. Uh, with the uh, approval of, or the recommended approval of the conditional use permit, the applicant is basically uh, intending to uh, refurbish the building by converting five of the six self-serve car wash bays and let me just kind of put the site plan in here. Oh. All right. Um, and they're also going to add a dumpster pad and enclosure, removal of the existing vacuum cleaners, remover of uh, two Metal, metal canopies on site. They're gonna have to recertify the septic tank, which you see in the rear of the property. Um, update the wastewater collection systems that are found in the five service bays. Um, add a five foot wide pedestrian sidewalk in the front that matches the adjacent property there to the south. Uh, clean out the uh, detention pond, which is located on the northern corner of the property, uh, partially in the Gwinnett County right away at this time. 
and uh, removal of all the uh, non-conforming lighting and then add some landscape strips there on the side which are signified uh, there with in, in yellow. So basically the request of these variances are a result of a property that was developed in 1988 when most of these codes uh, did not apply. It's also important to know that this um, development is within the corridor overlay improvement district and requires special or added features for pedestrian amenities and things of that nature. They've asked for some variances from that section. Uh, they've been asked to be allowed to vary from uh, providing a two by eight foot concrete pad every 300 feet where you put some street furniture including a bench, bike rack, and a trash receptacle. Uh, we recommend a denial of that request as there's plenty of room to place it there and it's really not uh, a high cost to the applicant. Um, they also request to be allowed to not install the sidewalk pedestrian lights. We also recommend a denial for that. They'd only be required one pole. It's relatively affordable as well. And uh, the other ones basically to provide decorative light fixtures throughout the parking area. They already have the poles in place and they're in a pretty good shape and uh, locate the building close to or oriented to the public right away, which they can achieve without basically demoing the whole building. So we recommended approval for those two. Um, they ask for some variances on the widths of the side landscape strips on the southern end uh, down from 5 to 2.4 and that's so they can have the ability to have the two-way drive and the parking stall in place and then once the uh, parking spaces end or terminate on the southern side that goes back to the required five feet. Uh, we recommended approval for that. And um, they basically asked that the, what's left there in the landscape strips in the parking lot islands be accepted as is per the new plan. They've also requested to be exempt from having more than 20% of parking in the front of the building. Once again, that's nothing they can control with the current orientation of the building, so we recommend approval. And they had originally asked to reduce the six foot sidewalk to uh, four feet after some measurements we found the adjacent sidewalk is five. So we recommend that uh, it stays at five and then uh, a general variance to allow the property to operate as is in case we forgot any. So we recommend uh, approval uh, with conditions and I believe the plan um, that are found in the ordinance, which encompass the ones, a couple of conditions that the planning commissioners added as well. Any questions? Are there any questions of council for Mr. Thompson? I have a few. Has this property been occupied? Let's see, it's been vacant four years. Is that I right? I think uh, since 2014 was the last, the last business we had in there. So yes, ma'am, four years. And in addition to the exterior changes that are planned, are there any additional environmental cleanups that need to be made here? Well, this is just kind of the way it's going to be set out and things like that. And they'll have to get a fire marshal PO, and if there's anything in there that doesn't need to be there, yeah, they'll have to clean it up, and part of that will be fixing those water uh, reclamation centers, too, that they use for the building, which Gwinnett County will be in control of. And this is still a septic system? It is, is and there's right? no okay. um, sewer in the general vicinity to the, and most of the time commercial uh, developments aren't on septic, but this one didn't have any other option. Anyone else with questions for Mr. Thompson? No. Okay, thank you, Mr. Thompson. Uh, is the applicant here? Uh, good evening. My name is Robert Sly, 1500 Timothy Road, Athens, Georgia. I'm speaking on behalf of the owner. Uh, Jason went over everything. I talked with the owner. He is fine with their recommendations um, that they apply to the site. Um, in reference to your question about a uh, environmental study was done on the site, with, I think within the past year, which the owner carefully looked at before he purchased the site and they did not find any in any problems with the site and also the septic system has already been approved by Gwinnett County it's we've already gone through that process so uh, any other questions any other questions of the applicant thank you sir thank you. 
This is a public hearing, so we'll open the floor to public comment. If anyone would like to come up and address us, either for or against, please come forward. Seeing none, uh, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, is someone ready to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion. Motion to approve CUP 1801 as described by Jason Thompson with the approval of the variances and the de denial of the request for variances as he enumerated. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further comment by council? None, then we'll entertain the vote. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. That is five in favor and zero opposed. The CUP has been granted. Next, we have our consent agenda. We have two items on the consent agenda. We have item A, consideration and action on adoption of a seatbelt policy. Uh, 2018-01 in consideration and action on surplus of 2006 Harley Davidson motorcycle. Mr. Sanders, you want to just? We would just ask uh, for approval of these two items. The seat belt policy is for the um, obvious protection of our employees. Everybody will have to sign a waiver that they agree and will wear a seat belt. Even those who who aren't in city vehicles but are given. Uh, um, reimbursement for uh, for vehicle use and uh, uh, the Harley Davidson uh, motorcycle has been replaced with a with a new one and we ask that it be put on surplus we hope through the uh, um, the seatbelt policy also to be become eligible for a LGRMS grant for uh, 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 an AED and other safety equipment very good with that description is there a motion for the consent agenda a uh, motion to approve the consent agenda. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. So motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. That is five in favor, none opposed. Okay, so we have no old business. We have two items under new business. We have item A, consideration and action on resolution 2018-03, support of Gwinnett County's transit planning efforts. Mr. Sanders, you want to say a word about that? Uh, Gwinnett County is undergoing, uh, uh, they've taken uh, uh, a very serious effort to update their uh, transit uh, uh, plans for the future. Um, we all know that uh, in the intervening years before um, after a, a discussion of uh, both the uh, uh, TIA SPLOST and then even earlier uh, when uh, the county had a serious discussion about, uh, uh, about MARTA expansion, things have changed a lot. Um, we have uh, uh, been participating with the county uh, in, their, in their transit discussion, transit efforts. Uh, they've they've done a, had a wonderful outreach effort, I think, to both ridership as well as stakeholders. And uh, um, I felt like that uh, the city, um, in the intervening years since our, our negative resolutions that uh, we had some 20 years ago, uh, I felt like our position needed to be update, updated and uh, uh, where, we, where we definitely uh, are very positive about our participation uh, in representing our citizens and our transit needs in our area. So we put this resolution together and uh, we'd ask for your uh, mayor and council support of the resolution. Thank you, sir. Uh, we'll take a motion. Motion to approve resolution 2018-03, support of Gwinnett County transit planning efforts. There's a motion for approval. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Any council um, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. That is five in favor, none opposed. 
Item B, we have consideration and action on resolution 2018-04, workers' compensation for reserve police officers. Mr. Sanders. Basically, this is just an administrative need. <clears throat> we have always provided workers' comp and paid for it for our reserve officers. And uh, um, this is just, uh, as I said, an administrative need for the mayor and council to go on record through this resolution in support of that. So we've been doing it. It just wasn't ever in writing. So we're getting that in writing now. So is there a motion on resolution 2018-04? Uh, motion to approve resolution 2018-04, workers' compensation for reserve police officers. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Who was first? Christy. Okay, there's a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. That is five in favor and none opposed. That ends our business portion of our meeting. So we'll go into council reports. Council Member Marmel. So there's an Easter service this Sunday. It's uh, being put forth by Westminster Presbyterian and Snellville United Methodist at 7 a.m. at the Town Green. Uh, just inviting y'all out. I'll be out there. So. Councilwoman Walensky. We all heard tonight from Chris O'Donohue about the Snellville Youth Commission. I could not be more pleased with the direction that this organization has moved with Chris's leadership. So a special commendation to him, as well as the students. Also uh, attended prom this weekend. That was my 26th prom, so that was kind of exciting. And uh, just keep in mind, spring break is coming up, so a little extra traffic, but maybe not so much in the mornings and the afternoon with school. Council Member Emanuel. He ducked out, but I just want to also commend Chris o O'Donohue for doing an exceptional job and for Christy for spearheading it. We have uh, we went to the summit this weekend and we had pretty good engagement with the students asking us questions about local government and how we stood on various issues. And in spite of all the negative stuff you see in the press, we've got a pretty good group of students in the Snellville area. So don't believe all the negative stuff you read and pay attention to what Chris is doing because he's bringing a lot of positive to the front of, of our city. Councilwoman Schultz. Um, just a couple things about those two projects that are near and dear to my heart. <laughs> what would they be? The first one, the Snowville Farmers Market. Um, this will be our ninth season <laughs> this year. It's hard to believe. Um, but I'm really pleased with the fact that we have a couple of new vendors this year that are local Snellville folks that are starting new business ventures. And I just think that's exciting to give them a chance to become known. Um, one is called Soul Bowl, and it's owned by Joseph and Olivia Porter, who are South Gwinnett High School graduates, lifelong Snellville residents, and they're going to be doing smoothies and granola, that type of thing. Um, and then we have another one, Simple Scoop Cookies. They're just starting. They're from uh, Grayson, actually, but they're all natural cookies. They say they're gourmet cookies, and they, and they say you can say all the ingredients that they put in them. <laughs> so I think that's kind of neat. And then the uh, community garden. You know how excited I get about the community garden. Um, I did want to mention that we have just a few beds available. We have one 4 by 12 and six 4 by 8s available. You would love gardening with this group of folks. We learn a lot from each other and have a good time at it. Um, we have three master gardeners that serve our uh, community garden, and I am just so impressed with the community service that they're doing on behalf of our garden, representing our garden. They were at the Senior Center today at 1 o'clock, and they led a class there, and then they took those that wanted to go over to the uh, garden. They took them through the greenhouse, and it was, it was just great. 
um, one of our master gardeners did a talk at the library last week. We have another talk planned at the library uh, in July, I think it is. So they're really reaching out and sharing all the great knowledge that they have. So um, those are my pet projects, as you know. <laughs> Um, I was just, oh, here it is. I just wanted to also um, tell on the community garden, uh, the city manager got an email from Georgia Municipal Association. They would like to, to do a feature on the Snellville Community Garden under the Innovation Made in Georgia category on their website. So they, they got wind of it and they went and checked the website and all the things that the community garden here is doing. And, um, and so they want to feature that so that the cities all across Georgia can see what we're doing here and what a great project this has been. Um, it's, so it's bringing recognition to our city in a really fine way. And appreciate uh, Gretchen and Kurt and, and all of the people who have been instrumental in getting this project off the ground and keeping it going and, and going in such a beautiful way. So very proud of um, these accomplishments for our city. Um, you know, just a lot of things still kind of percolating here at the city, very exciting times. Um, just, again, just remind everybody, keep track of Facebook and website for updates on the construction. They're starting to, to really start moving on it, so you're gonna start seeing a little bit more activity um, coming off of 78 onto Henry Clower. Uh, so just be mindful of that. Check the website, check the Facebook so that you can make your travel plans and, and know what's going to happen. Um, that will end my report. And so now we'll open up the floor to public comment. If anyone has anything, come forward. Give us your name and address for the record. Richard Wallace, 2088 Harbor Oaks Drive. I sent each one of you an email. It's been two weeks since I was before you. Nothing's really been done out at Snellville Pavilion, but I have gotten word from Mr. Sanders that, you know, they have promised to fix the fence. Um, there are some things that need to be addressed out there, and but I feel like I've got support now, and y'all understand what's going on out there, and I, I appreciate that, and thank the council. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that to our attention, and there seemed like nothing was going on, but there were some things going on back here trying to get it done, so should be done or a citation is on the way. <laughs> Does anyone else have any uh, comment? Then seeing none, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. That is five in favor, none opposed. We're done. Thank you all for coming out.